it's like, what does white mean? I, again, I have no problem with white people. <laughs> I have no problem with black people or brown or whatever you want to call yourself. But what does white mean if this guy is listed as white and this guy's not? What does white mean? I, I think the beauty of a primary source is that you're not being told what to think. You're just, you're looking at it. You're looking at something that someone wrote or made or recorded and whether it's true or it's not true or it's contemporaneous of that era and and you just we have to sit with it i am danielle romero thank you so much for being with me here on my channel where we talk about american identity and family stories and i was browsing the 23andme subreddit because i told you i just love hanging out over on the ancestry dna one the 23andme one and the genealogy one because I'm like, these are my people. <laughs> like, These are the people who are, are in the middle of trying to reconnect to their family story or find out more about their ancestry or trying to put that uh, family story in the context of American history or world history. And I just, I love like kind of lurking. But someone posted something yesterday and I think I like <laughs> audibly yelled out when I saw it. I was like, what? It was a newspaper clipping from the 1960s and it was kind of breaking down. I think it was like the three races. I'm gonna jump over the screen view so we can do that. But before I do, uh, I have a Patreon, which is basically a way for you and me to connect off of YouTube. And I would love to see you over there because I am thinking about the future of this channel. I just hit 100,000 subscribers, which to me means that there's a whole lot of us who are wanting to sit together and have a conversation about identity and uh, American history and all of those things. But I don't want it to just be me talking. I, I want you to get a chance to share your family story. And I'm thinking about how to do that. And so I have some ideas for a big project up on the Patreon right now. So for all of the paid Patreons, uh, if you haven't seen it, please go check it out and let me know your thoughts on this. I'm trying to work it out. All right, let's go over to the screen share. Okay, so here it is. Um, it said world races already got locked, uh, which means that the comments are probably getting out of control. And I want to share some of the comments because it's interesting to kind of see how people respond to stuff like this. So I want to show you this big, I just wanted to see if the original poster had anything. I think they just posted this image. All right, so I'll just make it bigger. Make myself smaller here. Okay, so I don't have any information on where this is. Let's see. Printed in Great Britain. Okay, so this is a, a British paper from the 1960. It says 1960 right here. That's cool to have that on there. So this is the races, and I think they have this out in case you want to cut it out and laminate it. <laughs> All right, so, so they have three groups, and we're going to go through this. White or what? Caucasiform? I don't feel like I've ever heard that. I've heard like Caucasian group. Black or Negroform? and yellow or mongoliform which i've always heard if people are using this like caucasoid negroid mongoloid all right so let's start with the white group i was surprised by the white group <laughs> maybe you'll be surprised by it too so they have this guy here a nordic race and that included scandinavians northern france germany belgium holland Great Britain. And you've got this guy. He looks a little bit like Link from Zelda. And then the Alpine race, which had central France, Switzerland, northern Italy, southern Germany, Czechoslovakia, Hungary. I was wondering if they were going to split Italy up. I tried not to look at this until we sat down together. The next one's a Baltic race, Finland, Russia, Prussia, and Poland. And this next, this fourth one here said Mediterranean race, but there's two Mediterranean races and they broke it down into Europe and Arab. So the European one is Iberian Peninsula. So that's, you know, Spain, Portugal, Southern France, Italy, which I'm assuming they mean Southern Italy because up here it said Northern Italy and Southwest Balkans. And so the other Mediterranean white race, they said includes North Africa, near and middle east so i think they may mean maybe egypt i'm not sure morocco for sure um not sure like where greece is uh, maybe that comes up a generic race is eastern alps balkans and asia minor look how joyful he is i just can't get over i have a picture of my dad where he's making a face like this 
And <laughs> I don't know, it just it, it reminds me of that picture of my dad. Uh, Armen Armenian race, people from the Caucasus region and Asia Minor. For some reason, this guy got a side profile. I thought that was really important for you to see. Indo-Iranian race. For instance, for, there are not this many races. Like, this is already weird, but let's roll with it still. Persia, Afghanistan, Western Himalayas, and then Ethriotic race, Ethiopian and maybe Somalia is saying, which is interesting that he's over here and we're gonna get to that. So let's jump over now to this, this black or Negro form group. Uh, they have Negro Sudanian race, uh, Central and West Africa, South of the Sahara. I think Sub-Sahara is a term, some people are telling me it's like fallen out of favor to use. So let me know what you think about that because I'm, I'm, I think they'll, they'll probably be using it here. It's 1960. Congolian race. I, I can't read that. My eyes are so bad, even though I have contacts on. I see it's a Central Africa, especially the Congo. So it's like, we're just putting all of those people in this group. Nilotic race, Sudan and Uganda. I'm curious why these are being separated almost by country. Uh, Zingian race, Bantu. I think I might say Ida, East and South, East Africa. Pygmoid or Negrito. Negrito would mean like little black in Spanish. Congo, Southeast Asia, Oceanus, and Melanesian race, Southeast Asia, Melanesia. I'm wondering if that, if they're trying to talk about maybe people from Samoa, I think. Australiform group, Australia, Asia, and I am not even going to try to pronounce that. South Africa. I'm going to have to look that up. I really, I didn't look this at this before we sat down because I really want to just sing with you in real time. All right, let's jump down to the yellow. And, and this goes back to a video I did maybe one or two videos ago where someone was saying their ancestry test was not as diverse as they had hoped. And I was just kind of reiterating the thing I talk about all the time. I don't like the crayon colors. I'm not going to go after people for how they identify. You do whatever you want to do with your identity. You could say whatever you want. I'm not going to like comment on you specifically, but if someone's to ask me or as a historian, like the way I've seen these things change over time, and I feel like we are doing ourselves and our nation and our world a huge disservice by grouping people into white, black, red, brown, yellow. And when even just seeing yellow here and look, they gave it like a yellow highlight bar. Did they do that up here? pink bar but this just feels uh, like uh, <laughs> you know what i mean like i don't know there's just something about it i don't love so let's see what they have for this uh, i think it says sinian race china japan tungusian i am not sure what that is west siberia this is deuteromalayan race southeast asia which is interesting because i i feel like they're kind of just saying like all of this is like generally asia oh here's polynesian polynesia race polynesia arctic eskimo race greenland arctic siberia and america and then american indian race north and south uh, america so i don't see i don't really see like, like indigenous like maybe like uh, people from mexico guatemala i don't think there is a second page to this i think this is it so let's go to the comments before before we <laughs> before we talk about this. Let me zoom back out. Okay, so this person, I like how they have one person aside from the Eskimo to represent all of North and South America. That's what I'm saying. Like the idea that you're going to just blend, you know, a culture like maybe the Haudenosaunee from the New York, Canada area, all the way down to, you know, very deep into Mexico. And they're represented by like this one face is very strange to me. That's why I was trying to figure out. Maybe I misread this. Um, this person said, as a Serb, I can confirm that the generic looks 100% as presented. This guy is literally generic man from 1920s Balkans. So this guy, he's saying this is a pretty good indication of what that group looks like. That's so funny. The white category be like, and it's it's very light blondes, like getting darker, darker. And then there's like one, there's one black person in that, which again is is kind of like, well, I'm trying to figure out how are they breaking this up? So here they're talking about that there are people who classify Northern Ethiopians and Somalis as Caucasian. And this goes back to just kind of put this in the f historical framework for the United States. This goes back to the court case, I think from, 
I want to say 1923, Bhagat Singh Thind. And he was a man who was from Northern India and he had served for the U.S. Army, I believe, but he wasn't a citizen and he was trying to gain citizenship. And Justice Sutherland, uh, who is an immigrant himself, but from England, had said that Bhagat Singh Thind, uh, he agreed with him that he was Caucasian, but he said he was not white. He wasn't um, like you wouldn't consider him white walking down the street. And why would he need to be white? If you're new to this channel, the reason is because you had to prove that you were either white or of African heritage to become a U.S. citizen after 1870. Before 1870, you had to be a free white man of good character to become a U.S. citizen. But it's very hard to figure out who is white when there are all these forks in the road of, well, you go down this way, then there's a dead end down here. So Bhagat Singh Finn tried to make the argument that he was one of the original Caucasians, but the justice said, well, you might be Caucasian, but you're not white. And so then there's this split there. I did a whole video on that. Uh, I can link to that below if you're interested. It's a super interesting court case. I'm wondering if is that, that's something that's happening here where they're saying, well, these people are Caucasian and, and they're not calling them white. They're calling them Caucasian. I don't think it says white. Does it say white? Oh, it does say white. It's like, what does white mean? I, again, I have no problem with white people. <laughs> I have no problem with black people or brown or whatever you want to call yourself. But what does white mean if this guy is listed as white and this guy's not? What does white mean? I, I, are we truly doing like a uh, World War II era like skull measurement situation? Is, is that how we're doing this? No, that's not what's happening. People are judging things on face value. But this is 1968. England. So I don't know what was going on there. So let's scroll down a little bit. This one, the Baltic one looks just like my grandma, who was a Ukrainian Lithuanian. I thought she looked like a babushka to me right here. And she had that, that little, like the little cute bonnet or bandana thing. This person said, this is wrong on so many levels. It reminds me of a picture chart at the Holocaust Museum that showed how I identified Jews, Africans, Romani, and others. Seriously, that's what I first thought of when I saw this makes me sad. This one, they managed to make them all ugly except the Nordic face. I agree, there's so many beautiful people from every race. I do think they made him look extra. Like he's he's got like the flowing hair and yeah, I, <laughs> I could definitely see that. This one, how did they decide Ethiopia, Ethiopia is white skull face? <laughs> this uh, a pitiful lack of Slavic representation. I think that's the other thing. Like when we start making these weird boxes, and then we have to decide, well, who gets a box and who just gets shoved into somebody else's box? And again, that can be really weird. I like it what this person said. Scientific consensus can be wrong. Uh, this was mainstream physical anthropology in the early 20th century. I remember seeing something similar in a children's encyclopedia around 1960. Physical anthropology was still shaking off scientific racism in mid-century and the change was slow and uneven. So it's interesting to me because I, I don't think it's racist to acknowledge diversity. I think diversity is beautiful. It's amazing. We we love that in the world. But these do give you like a little bit of an eh feeling. I like how this person said, I don't exist then because I'm a mixture of everything. I feel the same way where I'm like, okay, I guess technically I'm most like these, the European, Italian, but I need a little slice of like 20 of those. This person said they should call it phenotypes. And so this got locked, I'm assuming, because it went off on some weird, <laughs> people went off on some weird tirades. But I think it's fascinating to see it. So 1960 was my dad was one year old and my mom was a year out from being born. And this stuff was, was being published, you know, as fact. And again, it's not to say, hey, we don't have diversity and we're all exactly the same. No, of course not. Of course not. But there's something real weird about grouping people into these groups. And I want to understand why this is not called the pink group. I feel like this should be called the pink group. Um, I mean, obviously it doesn't make sense to use any color, but they got this black bar, they got their yellow bar, I guess. I don't know, maybe they couldn't figure out how to do a white box, but it's interesting to me. And I think the other thing is um, I'm looking for, I was telling you about that court case for Bhagat Singh Thin. He was from India. I'm trying to figure out where would he be? Maybe Indo-Iranian? This is Persia, Afghanistan, Western Himalayas. I'm not sure. Let me know what you think about that. So yeah, this was totally wild. I'm, I'm really fascinated by 
the primary sources. I love to see the primary sources, even when the primary sources are crazy. I think it's it's good to have to work with them and manipulate them. And I homeschool my kids and my oldest is 10 and she's going into fifth grade this year. And that's the year where they really expect you to be really heavy with primary sources. And I'm looking forward to doing that with her and, and kind of work through how do we fit that into a schema of what we know? What questions does it raise? I, I just I think that's the beauty of the primary sources is that we have to engage with it. We have to struggle with the primary source and compare it to things and contrast it to things. And I think that's great. And I think uh, seeing primary sources even like this, because this is a primary source of the time, is great. It's important. And I think it helps us to understand things a lot better. So let me know what you think about this. And if you want to hang out with me, I have a secret YouTube channel. I'm running with my husband and we're just talking about stuff. We're literally just talking about everything. So I'd love to have you over there. I'll leave a link to that below. Otherwise, we'll talk soon.